Namaste, I am Dr. Ramaya Amonkar and welcome back to our hypertension series. In our last video, we busted a big myth that your blood pressure readings are always right. See, blood pressure readings are dynamic and keep changing with emotion, posture and many other reasons. But sometimes the number isn't lying, your technique is. So today we are doing what most people skip, how to measure your BP the right way at home. And yes, which machines to trust and which are just fancy fitness toys. This episode could save you from a lifetime of wrong diagnosis, unnecessary medications or worse, missed warning signs. So let's dive in. First up, let's talk technology. A number of devices are available, the digital arm cuff monitors, the wrist cuff monitors and the stylish smartwatches. Now, which ones are reliable? How do they fare up to the traditional mercury-based pigmentometer devices that uh, we doctors use in the clinic? And which one should you use? Let's find out. So first is the smartwatches and wrist devices. They are flashy but not fully trustworthy. Smartwatches uh, measure your blood pressure using optical sensors based on light reflection and pulse wave analysis. Sound smart, but here's the catch. They are easily affected by your skin tone, motion, sweat, the tightness of the strap and the wrist artery anatomy. And that's why these readings can vary significantly. They are not validated and not recommended. Now, second is your wrist BP monitors. Uh, they are better than the smartwatches, but still less reliable than the upper arm ones. Why? Because your wrist arteries are narrower and closer to the surface. So uh, even a slight change in the position can throw the reading off. So what should you use at home? Now here's the gold standard, a validated digital upper arm BP monitor. Now these are called oscillometric devices. An oscillometric BP monitor works by inflating the cuff to temporarily stop blood flow. Now as the cuff deflates, tiny vibrations caused by the blood flowing back into your artery, these are called oscillations, they are picked up by the sensors. Now the machine then uses an algorithm to calculate the systolic blood pressure, that is when the blood just starts to flow the diastolic blood pressure when the blood flow becomes smooth and your pulse rate. So no mercury, no stethoscope and that's absolutely fine. Many patients ask me whether uh, they should be using a mercury spigmomanometer device at home. Now those manual devices are accurate but only in trained hands. If you try to use them at home, you may end up treating wrong readings or ignoring real ones. Nowadays even doctors use the digital oscillometric devices in clinics. Why? because they are clinically validated for accuracy, easy to use and when used correctly they give a very reliable picture. And no, they are not inferior to mercury or manual devices. In fact, oscillometric devices eliminate the human error that comes with using a stethoscope, especially in noisy environments or elderly patients with faint heart sounds. In fact, many of the trials used to study hypertension and antihypertensive medications use automated oscillometric device. So what features should you look for in your digital BP monitor? First, it should have an upper arm cuff, not a wrist one. The cuff should be of proper size. Now you can have additional cuffs of different sizes if multiple family members are going to use it. Now I have attached a list of standard cuff sizes in the description box. Next, it should have a memory function to track trends. Now if you forget to record your readings manually. Now check for validation labels like the ESH or BIHS or ISO certification. If you are a tech savvy person, go for Bluetooth enabled models. They log your readings, show graphs and help you share your reports with the doctor. But if your parents are going to use it, please do not make them uncomfortable. Keep it simple. Let them take a reading and chart it manually. The good news is that you don't need to spend a fortune. A good device is available in the price range of around 1500 to 2000 rupees. Some of the trusted brands are Omron, Microlife and AccuSure. Another common question, do I need to calibrate these machines? The answer is no, routine calibration is not required. Just change batteries and store it carefully. Now, most manufacturers and hypertension societies, uh, they recommend calibration every two years but you might require it sooner if the readings start to vary widely or seem inconsistent with your clinic readings. Also, if you have dropped the device or stored it improperly or you have been using it heavily like uh, for multiple patients daily, you might need calibration. But for most home users, once in two to three years is good enough. So how long does a digital BP monitor last? 
So with proper care, a device can easily last for up to three to five years. So now that we know what machine to use, let's understand how to use it best. The key isn't the machine, it's the method. Now here's the tested seven step method. First, before you even press that on button, sit calmly for five minutes, no phone, no chai, no coffee, no multitasking, just breathe. Second, sit straight on a chair with your back supported, your legs uncrossed and feet flat on the floor. No slouching or crossing legs. The posture affects readings by up to 10 millimeters of mouth. Third, place the cuff on your bare upper arm at mid arm level and make sure your arm is supported at the level of the heart by placing it on a table or a pillow for support. Avoid making a fist while taking a reading as it can falsely increase your blood pressure by around 5 millimeters of mercury. Uh, that's from the constriction of the arteries of your hand by the contracting muscles of the forearm. Now choose one arm and stick to that arm while taking measurements. Fourth, don't talk, don't move. Talking can raise blood pressure by up to 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Yes, yes, seriously. Fifth, take two readings, one minute apart. And if they differ by more than 10 points, you take a third reading and please chart all the reading. Sixth rule, best times, once in the morning, that is uh, 30 minutes after waking, before breakfast and before medications. And once in the evening, before your dinner. And final rule, do this routine for seven days and then calculate the average, that's your real BP. For diagnosis, we often recommend to do this for up to two weeks and for long-term monitoring, weekly readings can be often good enough. Once you follow these seven steps, your readings won't be just numbers, they'll be insights because that's how we treat high blood pressure. Not with panic, but with a pattern recognition and personalized plans. So now you know, it's not just the machine, it's the method. You don't need a fancy stethoscope or a hospital visit every time. With a validated digital monitor, a few simple steps and a bit of consistency, you can take charge of your blood pressure right from your living room. Because when you measure it right, you can manage it right. And that's how we prevent overdiagnosis, avoid unnecessary panic and actually protect the heart. I suggest you save this video Rewatch it the next time you're about to check your blood pressure. And trust me, it helps. And speaking of protecting your heart, in the next episode of our hypertension series, we are going to bust one of the biggest health myths of all time. Is salt the real villain in your BP story? Or has it been unfairly blamed for decades? You'll find out the truth, the science, the misconceptions, and what you actually need to do. So hit subscribe, ring the bell, and share this with someone who bought a BP machine but hasn't read the manual yet because here at Edgy Cardio Wise, we don't just tell you to track numbers, we teach you how to understand them. So goodbye and take care.